This time we'll take a look on how to install Contenta CMS and Contenta JS from scratch using MySQL as the database. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go to contentacms.org and scroll down to the install section or go directly like this. Uh, so in here you'll see that there is a quick install which is for evaluators. You just copy and paste this. Uh, we're going to scroll down a little bit and uh, we're going to start Contenta by uh, following this recipe. Uh, the first thing that you will notice is that Contenta needs Composer 1.7 or higher. Um, and this uh, was a fun bug that we had to trace and uh, this is uh, this is fixed in Composer 1.7. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it here. I'm going to change this to a path that exists, which is TMP, let's say Contenta CMS. And uh, this is going to download this script, which you can inspect. So you'll see that there is nothing uh, weird going on and you can actually execute the script. Um, so let's do that. Um, oh, it seems that I do have something already from a previous test. So, uh, all right, that's my password. All right, let's retry this. Okay. Um, it is installing and uh, this takes a while because uh, well because Composer needs to do a bunch of stuff um, but uh, this will only download the code that you need in order to to install Contenta. Uh, so far we cannot uh, guess your database password and where it's it is uh, so we're gonna have to uh, go to that next but in the meantime while Composer is doing this I'm going to show you that I uh, already have an empty database uh, that's called Contenta uh, the user is also called Contenta and the password is also Contenta this is for my local so I don't care about uh, any of that security stuff and this is a throwaway installation anyways so um, we shouldn't worry too much about that so other than that um, we're going to download in parallel, also in, in TMP, we're going to download Contenta.js. Oops, not that one. Ah, there we go. So in here, um, you'll see a little bit of a description, but uh, in particular, we want to go here download the, the zip file. I'm going to use curl, but you can do it however you want. Oops. This is uh, going to download the master zip file. Uh, okay, so this, I'm going to move this contenta.js master to contenta.js. Right, so so we have um, Composer here doing its thing. We already got Contenta.js downloaded as a zip file. So let's inspect. Oops. Let's inspect what's in here. Um, you'll see that um, there is a configuration folder, and uh, we're going to use that to point Contenta.js to the Contenta CMS. So. Uh, the node proxy is going to point to the actual uh, backend server, uh, which is going to be PHP. So, uh, but for now, we're going to, we just downloaded the code for Contenta.js and we're going to do npm install. And that's, that will install some download and install some dependencies. So, um, npm is doing its thing in here and uh, Composer already finished here. So uh, we're going to move to, to PHP. Uh, we're going back and forth uh, in the interest of time because otherwise I will, we would be staring at this spinner for a while. And um, so we download it here in, remember, Contenta CMS. You'll see that we have the 
the vendor uh, for com the the contains the composer dependencies, and then uh, there is the web web project. So we're gonna go back to the instructions though. In here it says that we need to copy example m dot m dot example to dot m, and then we need to create a dot m local. So uh, I'm gonna copy and paste this, which uh, coincidentally matches my setup. As I said, use the database contenta, user contenta, and my SQL password contenta. Um, so I'm gonna copy this into dot m, and uh, I can do it by doing sublime dot m. I copy this here. All right. And then I'm gonna create m dot local. So in this case, uh, you'll see why I have two different files for this. Uh, and w that is because in here um, I have an an ignore rule for dot m dot local. So this can contain secrets that should not be committed to the repository but you want them to expose us uh, you want to expose them as environment variables so it is safe for you to include that m in your in your git repository uh, if you if you want to so um, that's uh, how we are going to structure our environment variables using that m so once we've done that uh, there is a, a nifty uh, command which is install with mysql and that will read the variables from from here and we'll install everything so let's uh, copy and paste that and see how how that um, executes so it basically calls uh, drash site install and creates the um, uh, the different variables that you need um, you'll see the progress in in here and this is a regular Drupal installation, so you don't need to worry too much about that. But after the installation is done, uh, it's going to enable some modules for you that otherwise you would need to do yourself. So um, now we're going to jump back because uh, Contented.js actually finished. Oh, never mind. Uh, the Drush site install already finished. Um, so let's let's try. So I'm going to. Uh, now you could use your local Apache configuration or do whatever. I'm going to use Drush run server because that's uh, what's convenient for me. And you can see here that it starts in 127 localhost 8888. Eight, eight, eight. I'm going to copy and paste this over here. And uh, voila, uh, this uh, brings you to a content CMS. And as we said, we have admin, admin. Uh, not now. And uh, here in content, we'll see that this installed the, the Umami content model uh, and we adapted the content installed to use umami the umami content model so you can see here uh, the different recipes you can navigate like this or you can go and go to a slash api and it will give you the different um, different endpoint and you will start getting recipes so right now we are hitting uh, content cms directly and um, we're going to start hitting it through a proxy. Uh, so in order to do that, what we need to do is in here, uh, we need to create inside of config a local.yaml file. But actually, I'm going to uh, open everything here. Um, so the local YAML file will, for your local, it will override any configuration that is in here. So 
you can leave this alone, the, the default alone. And uh, here there are some examples for the development instance, the production, stage, and test, etc. And for your local, uh, what we need to set is this, the configuration for where the CMS is. And that is CMS host. So we're gonna set that. Um, so let me go into config and to that and you'll see here that uh, this is what we set uh, i just used the command line but uh, you can just edit it normally yourself uh, so that's everything that you need to do actually so we did npm install uh, now i'm going to do npm start and you'll see that uh, thanks to this configuration here um, this is going to take this is going to have node spin as many processes as uh, cores I have in my local. So uh, therefore, you can see that there are uh, eight of those, uh, four and four. And um, also uh, by using Contenta JS, uh, by default, if a process for some reason dies, it will restart itself. So um, unless you uh, kill it for legit reasons. So uh, those are kind of the benefits that you get by using uh, Contenta.js and if you're curious to know more about what are the benefits of using a Node.js proxy uh, you can uh, watch the previous video or go to um, to the this post here uh, that so that's introducing Contenta.js and read a, a little bit more about that. So uh, let's let's have a try. So this has started the server, the Node.js server, uh, according to this configuration, in localhost port 3000. So I'm going to use Postman this time. I'm going to do localhost 300. And uh, this is going to be living under API and voila uh, we are hitting the same we're getting the same response but uh, the big benefit of this is that uh, we're gonna have um, client-side caching uh, or server-side caching for the proxy and we're gonna have aggregation of services here so we can do uh, a lot of stuff here so what do you do with your Node.js proxy from now from this point on uh, is up to you, depends on your project, but uh, this uh, kind of keeps hand-to-hand -hand Contenta CMS with uh, your Node proxy. So for instance, if you do something like going here, sorry, apps, I miss, yeah, and going to advanced, configuration, web services, this API overrides in here, you said, I don't know, s some other prefix uh, and save this, then Contenta.js automatically updates and uh, it will expect the routes to be, after restarting, to be in some other prefix and if you add more uh, content types they are uh, directly included here uh, and it keeps kind of a uh, keep tabs with content.js and the content model so uh, I didn't save this so uh, this did not take effect so if you select recipes it's gonna go to content CMS for for that to get the to get the the data, sorry. Uh, but if you add something that uh, doesn't really exist, since Contenta.js knows about the content model in Contenta CMS, it's not even going to go there. So it's not going to bother. Um, it's not going to bother uh, the PHP server. So we take we take some load out of uh, Drupal. So there are some nice improvements and um, I hope that this is a good baseline for us to build together uh, common things. And since now we have a 
starting point uh, like uh, Contenta.js can be for your Node.js server, uh, we hope to be able to collaborate and build more interesting integrations like the one that I showed you about keeping tabs with the um, content model. That's it for now. Um, and I hope that uh, you didn't have any troubles installing Contenta.js and Contenta CMS. If you did, uh, please file an issue and we'll try to resolve that. Uh, historically, the biggest problems have been resolved by uh, Composer, uh, updating Composer, and uh, that there is little that we can do uh, on that. But uh, make sure to open an issue and seek uh, for support in the Contenta in the Contenta channel in Drupal Slack. Bye.